Okay, so <laughs> this is actually the second time I'm recording this lecture. <laughs> the first time around, I'm not sure what happened. I tried to save, or rather I tried to share my screen uh, using my iPad through the methodology that I had been using before, but apparently that didn't work. So now I had to find a workaround, maybe like, I don't know, uh, Zoom or somebody was hating. So it doesn't matter. We found it. Uh, we got it here. And so now we're going to start. So welcome back, class. Uh, horns up, baby. But, you know, we're here for lecture three, all right, uh, on complex numbers. And I want to begin our discussion on complex numbers with a discussion on uh, the deviation that I'm going to be taking here uh, during this lecture. All right, so there's actually two reasons for this deviation on this lecture. One, uh, I, don't, I didn't feel that the book discussed complex numbers in, the, in depth enough uh, to kind of my satisfactory of what I believe your knowledge of complex numbers will need to be in order to progress through the field of physics. So if you aspire to be a physicist, I feel like there's a couple of details that um, should be discussed, you know? So I wanted to add a couple of those things. Uh, you're going to see these ideas uh, over and over again throughout your career. So when you take electrodynamics, quantum mechanics, even classical dynamics, these ideas will come up again and again, these complex numbers. And there's uh, the reason for this being uh, using complex numbers actually makes the math a lot easier. Certainly you can um, solve all of these problems uh, without complex numbers. However, uh, when you do such a thing or when you do that, it will be a lot more difficult. So, you know, gaining some familiarity with complex numbers and how they work uh, is very beneficial to the physicists, the aspiring physicists. And two, I'm deviating from the book because the notation in which they use in the book for the complex number or the imaginary number, I, um, they like to use J. Now, I had a discussion about this with my mentor before, um, and I guess we kind of came to the conclusion that uh, J may be used by engineers. Now, that's not to say that physicists don't use J, uh, but down here in Texas, you know, where we bleed orange, horns up, baby. Um, we use I, and uh, the book goes on to discuss that they like to use J because the letter I is reserved to uh, the current, and it is certainly true that I is used for current, but to my knowledge, uh, I is typically capitalized when discussing current, and then secondly, if there is, actually, now that I think about it, there's this thing called the current density, which the uh, <laughs> variable for that is J. So the, the, very, the letter reserved for the current density is J. So, you know, you kind of run into the same issue. Well, not even because, you know, here I is lowercase, but I don't know. In my discussions or my experience, I has always been uppercase. But it very well may be the case that, you know, for particular courses, I is lowercase. So that's the reason for the deviation from the book, um, because I am of the school of thought that even if I were to use I to denote uh, an imaginary number or a complex number, you should be able to, from the context of the problem, determine what it is that I'm referring to. Uh, and so uh, hopefully that makes sense. I mean, unless something really crazy were to happen. And I, I is typically what you will see when refer, referring to imaginary numbers or complex numbers. So uh, that's the second reason, because you're going to see it again and again in quantum mechanics, classical mechanics, uh, classical dynamics, even in your 
a complex analysis class, you're not gonna see J, you're gonna see I. So it's to get you used to that notation, all right? And so let's begin our discussion of complex numbers. So suppose that you had a complex number and I'm gonna give it this variable Z. Suppose you had a complex number Z. Complex numbers that composed of two parts, all right? The real part. And for this complex number, I'm going to determine, I'm going to uh, say that the real part of Z is X. So real part. And an imaginary part, all right? And the imaginary part is denoted with this imaginary number I. And so this whole team, this whole thing is, is an imaginary part. All right, and so now I want to make a very clear distinction here that X and Y are both real numbers, right? They're both real numbers. They're both real numbers. So don't, don't sit here and think that uh, y, y is an imaginary number. Y is not an imaginary number. Y is a real number. It's just, it's the imaginary component. It's the component of the imaginary part, all right? So don't, don't, make, that, don't make that mistake. Y is a real number, okay? And real numbers are the, the numbers that you're familiar with, you know? One, two, three, zero, negative one, blah, blah, blah. Those are all real numbers, even pi, irrational numbers. So things of that nature, three divided by seven, those are all real numbers, right? Uh, the imaginary number, however, and this is what I was discussing earlier. In the book, it's, uh, it's, it's given the variable j, uh, but once again, here, I'm going to say it's I, that's an I, that's an I. It's the square root of minus one, all right? Or another way of saying this, I squared is equal to minus one, all right? So hopefully that's clear. If there's any questions about that, please feel free to ask, um, and maybe a mathematician can get back to you. <laughs> uh, so let's continue on in our discussion. Uh, let's see, where, <clears throat> where do I go from here? Okay, so the next thing I want to discuss is the operations of which you can use, uh, that you can perform using complex numbers. So the operations of complex numbers. Operations of complex numbers. And once again, if you can't read my handwriting, please, Say something in the comments. Maybe I'll take some time to uh, write a little clearer, but you know, uh, until then I'll continue. So uh, there are a couple of operations which you're probably familiar with. So let's suppose that we had two complex numbers. The first being Z1 and Z1 is composed of real part X1 and some imaginary part with real number y1, and the second one, I don't know, let's go z2, right? Makes sense if I call the first one z1, let's call the second one z2, and that's x2 plus i y2, okay? So that's, uh, those are the two uh, complex numbers that uh, we're going to be using to demonstrate some of the operations which you can perform with um, uh, complex numbers. So the first one that I want to uh, demonstrate is addition. All right, so I'll write it down here, addition. You can add them. So Z1 oops, plus Z2, that's going to equal, you'll just, it'll be the sum of the real parts, X1 plus X2 plus I times Y1 plus Y2, all right? And subtraction will be Z1 minus Z2. So how would I perform this? It'd be X1, I bet you could probably guess, X minus X2 plus I, Y1 minus Y2. 
okay? And ultimately, uh, what am I doing? I'm simply adding or subtracting the components of uh, the complex number. See, I added the real part of Z1 to the real part of Z2 and uh, the imaginary part of, let me get my pointer, and the imaginary part of Z1, that, which is Y1, to the imaginary part of Z2, which is Y2, and the same for subtraction, right? And ultimately, you would get some new imaginary number. Uh, you could call it Z3 or Z, whatever you want to call it, but it would have, in, in the case of uh, Z1 plus Z2, it would have some x1 plus x2, some real part x1 plus x2, and some imaginary part that's uh, y1 plus y2, okay? And, hopefully, and same for subtraction. Okay, hopefully that's clear. And if that is clear, you know, I want to make this statement that uh, these complex numbers, well, actually, let me, let me continue. Oh, no, 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 yes, I do wanna make the statement now, that um, these complex numbers, they add and subtract very similarly to vectors, all right? And so that idea is going to be important. So here, I actually want to mention the idea that sometimes, instead of writing out x plus i, y, sometimes you may want to write z is x comma y. Right, and it's the same. It's the same idea, right? So z one plus z two, it would just be x one plus x two, comma y one plus y two. Right? If you can kind of get the idea that okay, maybe this can be represented as a vector. Um, future discussions of this lecture will make uh, a little more sense. All right, when we begin to discuss things uh, to get more information about uh, complex numbers, these representations of complex numbers. Okay, but let me continue on uh, with some of the operations which you can perform on these complex numbers. So you can also multiply complex numbers. You can multiply them. Oops. multiply them. And how would I do such a thing? Well, let's take Z1 and multiply it by Z2. Right? And let's see what we get. And you're going to do, you're going to get the same thing that you would if you were <clears throat> multiplying, um, you know, like cross multiplying numbers. So, well, maybe I should just show you instead of talking about it, I'll just show you. So let's say I had some X1 plus I Y1 and I multiply that by some x2 plus i y2, what do I get, right? I get some x1 times x2, x1 times x2, and then I get some i, well, let me, let me do the other part, minus, minus, and I, I'll incur, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. So minus um, i squared, y1, uh, y2, no, it's plus actually, plus i squared, y1, y2, and then plus, so that's that. I wrote it this way for a reason, but then you're gonna get some plus i, x1, yeah, let's do x1, x1, y2, yes, plus some i, uh, x2, y1, okay? Um, hopefully that's pretty clear what I've done there. I, I, all I did here was I took x1, multiplied it by x2, took x1, multiplied it by i, y2, right? I took i, y1, multiplied it by x2, where is that at, right? Um, and I took i, y1, and multiplied it by i, y2, and you get right here. See, so that's why I have this i squared here. But what is i squared? We, we mentioned what i squared is, right? So let's rewrite this. We have some x1, x2, 
minus y1, y2 plus i times x1, y2 plus x, oops, x2, y1, right? And so that's what z1 times z2 would be, all right? So uh, that's not the last uh, operation that I want to mention, but hopefully you can kind of see how uh, you multiply these complex numbers, right? And they're very similar to uh, the cross uh, products that you may have uh, seen before. Okay, so let me continue. So the last operation I want to mention is this idea of a complex conjugate. Complex conjugate. All right, and so suppose you had some complex number z, which had real part x plus i, y, all right? If I told you to take the complex conjugate of this thing, which I'll denote with z star, what I'm saying to you is I want you to take x and I want you to multiply by a negative one anywhere you see an i, all right? So here we have plus i, y, you're gonna end up with a minus i, y. So you just change the sign in front of the i, all right? So if I had some, uh, some other complex number, I'll call it z naught, z naught. If I had some other complex number that was x minus i, y, uh, z naught star would be x plus i, y. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. Anywhere there's a anywhere there's an imaginary number i, you would uh, change the sign in front of it. That's how you would take the complex conjugate of some uh, complex number. Okay, so now that we have uh, this idea of um, what are operations that we can perform on complex numbers, I have a concept quiz for you. All right. And this one's the easy one. So uh, one, uh, let, maybe I can even write this out, concept quiz. Concept quiz. All right, one, what is the complex conjugate Of, of what? Of A, E to the I, B. I want you to determine what that is, all right? So take your time, uh, work that out at home. Oh, and actually, while I'm thinking about it, uh, like, comment, and subscribe below. You know, if I'm going too fast, moving too slow, um, may have missed something, might have made an error. I want you to say it, all right? So please share that with me. I'd love to hear it, get your feedback. Uh, all of it's approved, you know? Even if you're a hater, baby, I, I love it all. I, I accept everything. And like I told you before, you know, I, I failed at this. I'll tell you straight up, I failed. And so um, I have no issue with being wrong. I, you know, it only makes me better. So let me know. All right, so, all right. We're gonna continue though. Uh, so remember I mentioned earlier with this idea that um, you can represent these complex numbers as kind of with this uh, vector representation here with these parentheses, right? Um, and so what happens if we try to represent this thing graphically, right? If we try to represent this, this complex number graphically, uh, well, ultimately in order to do this, you would have to go into this space, which is typically referred to as the complex plane. All right, so you gotta go into the complex plane. And when you go into the complex plane, uh, what you end up having are these two axes, the vertical axis being the imaginary axis. It's the imaginary axis sometimes noted as I am, or other times you might see someone just write an I, right? 
and then the horizontal axis. There we go. Is the real axis. All right. So the re the real axis just being composed of all the real numbers. So this is zero, but all the real numbers, you know, negative real numbers. And the imaginary axis, once again, they're real numbers as well. All right, but uh, all those real numbers are multiplied by i. And so that's why sometimes you might see i there. I there. All right, um, hopefully that's clear. Maybe I should even like denote, I'm, I'm trying to say some, it depends on who teacher is or maybe the book you're reading, with how they'll label these axes. That's, that's all I'm saying there. I'm not saying this is I, I am, open parentheses, I, and I'm just trying to say, it depends on who you're talking to, all right? So depending on who you're talking to determines how they denote it. All right, anyways, so let's, let's, let's try and represent our complex number Z, which is X, Y, or Z is equal to X plus I, Y on this uh, complex, in this complex plane, in this space here. So it has some component that's real, the real part of Z, which is X, and some imaginary component, which is Y. The imaginary part, I should say, which is Y. Excuse me. Mm. All right, and so if we were to represent this on our graph here, uh, we see here, I'm gonna use burnt orange because I love burnt orange, um, that our point Z, uh, X, Y, it's right here on the plane, okay? And so now the next thing that actually becomes important here, uh, that becomes of interest, is actually this distance away from the origin. All right, this distance away from the origin, I'm going to denote here as R, all right? It's R, and it's making, a, it's, it's making some angle. It's making some angle, which I'll call theta with the real axis, okay? Hopefully that's clear. But uh, this R here, R is the length away, uh, is the length uh, from the origin to that point x, y. Uh, but what is R, right? If, if z were some vector, if z were some vector, you know, we know that that would be, uh, the mod, well, the mod of Z, the modulus of Z, the length of Z. So R is the modulus of Z. And we're gonna discuss a little more on how you would uh, compute what the mod of Z is. But before we get to that, um, since, since I've already defined uh, this to be R, we know that this is Y and, oh, I need my pointer. I've already defined this length to be r. Uh, let's, let's break this r into components, right? If I wanted to determine what the value of x were in terms of r and theta, well, just using a little trigonometry, we see that x is equal to r cosine theta. And if I wanted to uh, determine what y were, we see that that's r sine theta, right? <clears> or <throat> well, theta, theta is the angle that's being made uh, between that line and the real axis. Okay, and so uh, if this is the case, that means I can rewrite my complex number as instead of some real part x, I can write it as r cosine theta plus i times y r sine theta, right? Let's, let's not forget, I'll be a little more explicit here because I don't want you to forget. But that's x, r cosine theta is x and r sine theta is y, right? So I can also just factor that out and say that's factor out this common factor of r and say cosine theta plus i sine theta, all right? All right, and we're gonna come back to that in a bit. But uh, before we do, I want to determine what is the value of R 
right? Well, hey, we're just gonna use our uh, our friend uh, Pythagorean. He he has this theorem for right triangles, right? And what was that for right triangles? Uh, that this the the square of the length of this side here, the square of the length of this side r. So r squared would just be x squared plus y squared, right? So r squared, which is what? It is the mod of z squared is just going to equal um, x squared plus y squared, right? Hopefully that's clear because this is a right triangle. So uh, that, that statement should be true. Now, here's my next question. This isn't a concept quiz, rather it's a question which I want to dive into to kind of uh, specify some or clarify some something about uh, the mod of the complex number. So is the mod square, is the mod square equal to z squared? Right? That's, that's the thing I want to figure out. Well, we already know what the mod square is. It's this x squared plus y squared, right? So maybe I should just go ahead and box this because this is, uh, I guess, some important information. Uh, so what is z squared? That's the question now. Z squared is what? X plus I Y times X plus I Y. And we already know how to multiply these things, right? So we're gonna end up with what? X squared minus Y squared plus two I X Y. Uh, if you don't know how to get that, um, you know, you can pause the video and go ahead and work that out for yourself. Maybe I can write this a little better. Um, that's a two. 2IXY. <clears throat> and so ultimately we see that these two things, uh, mods, the mod square, the mod square of Z and Z squared are not the same. Okay, so let's not make that mistake. All right. That'd be a mistake. Don't don't think those two things are the same. They are not. So the question is. What operations or what things can I do? What can I use to determine or, or compute what the mod square of a complex number is? Well, we mentioned it earlier. You're going to use two operations. It's actually the complex conjugates and multiplication. So let's see what happens when we take our complex number z and we multiply it by its complex conjugate. You get x plus i y times x minus i y, right? And what do you get? X squared uh, minus i squared y squared, and then you get what? Uh, plus i x y minus i x y. Obviously, these two things cancel, right? And what do you? And i squared we mentioned at the beginning of the video was minus one, right? I squared is minus one. Hopefully you see that. Maybe I can change it here. I squared is minus one, green dot. Uh, uh, so minus, uh, minus one is plus one. So what is that equal? That's just equal to X squared plus Y squared, all right? So we see now that uh, the, mod, the mod of Z squared is equal to the complex or Z times its complex conjugate. And that gives us uh, what we were interested in at first, x squared plus y squared, okay? So uh, those were a couple of the things that I wanted to discuss here. Uh, we're almost finished actually. So let me go ahead and wrap this up. I want to, uh, I guess I can say, you know, you know that that's equal to r squared. <clears throat> so lastly, I wanna finish this discussion. So lastly, I want to finish this discussion with a summary of the things that we kind of covered. And so uh, we kind of covered that we covered. Uh, Z is equal to what? Some real, no, some real part X, which is composed of a real number X, plus some imaginary part, which is also composed of some real number Y. Well, we can also write that as R, uh, cosine theta plus I 
sine theta, right? Where theta is the angle that's being made uh, from the real axis. Um, and R is that distance away from the origin to your point X, Y in the complex plane. Hopefully those things are clear. Uh, we discussed them. If you don't recall them, I understand. Let's kind of go back. Once again, um, theta is the angle being made uh, from the line that's uh, from uh, that's that is created when you're trying when you draw a line from the origin to your point x y, which x is the real part of your complex number, and y is the imaginary part of your complex number. Uh, when it's expressed in the complex plane, it's the angle that's being made from the real axis. Okay. Hopefully all of that made sense and you were able to follow along with that. If not, please ask questions. I will do my best to clarify them. Um, but I think I described that pretty accurately. Okay, so next, the next thing that I want to do is actually I want to state this without proof. I want to make a statement without proof. And it's a statement on something that's pretty important and that's going to come up all the time within your career as a physicist, Euler's identity. There's a reason I'm stating this without proof. So you don't have to ask me about this because actually um, I, I wanna leave it as an assignment to you. But I'm stating this without proof. E to the I theta, Euler showed that E to the I theta is equal to cosine theta plus I sine theta, all right? And so with this extra information, this, this lets us know that Z is also here. And this is one of the great functionalities of this iPad, right? Uh, I can copy here, boom, wow. See that, so boom, didn't even have to rewrite it. But I can also rewrite this as R, what? E to the I theta. And it's a lot more compact, all right? And that'd be, uh, you know, I think there's actually a, a name for the representation of, uh, of this. I can't recall exactly what that name is at this moment. I know it's in the book, so go read through the book and actually in the comments below, let me know what the name of this representation of the complex number Z is, all right? If you're paying attention and following along, thanks, I appreciate you very much. Um, however, <clears throat> we'll continue this discussion. Uh, but but this this is actually very important, right? This is R e to the i theta. So our complex number can be represented in this fashion. And so I'll close our lecture. I'll end our lecture with uh, a concept quiz, so, which I want you to go on and think about independently. So this is concept quiz two. We got two concept quizzes this time. And this time is actually gonna be um, with two uh, questions. So you got two concept quizzes in this one. So the first one, I want you to determine what is the angle theta? What is the angle theta? All right, think trigonometric trig identities, right? You need to go back to here, go back to your complex plane. And I want you to use the identities which you're familiar with, with right triangles and your trigon trig uh, trigonometry. All right, we already actually kind of use this right here. And I'm, I'm really giving you the answer already. So it's okay, I won't write it down because um, then I'd really just be telling you exactly what to do. But I'm, I'm literally giving you the answer, you know? I could have, I shouldn't have even said anything. But I want you to use your trig identities to determine what is theta. And then lastly, this one, I mentioned to you what it was before. But I'll actually write down the hint this time because it actually, um, it may serve very well for you to remember it. So uh, the question, it's not even a question rather, it's rather a statement. I want you to prove Euler's identity. All 
I want you to prove it. Prove that e to the i theta. Prove, prove this. This is very important. Prove that e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. I remember when I had to do that the first time. It was actually during my waves course. <laughs> but uh, yes, I want you to prove it, okay? Um, why do I want you to prove this? Because you should not take anything that anyone ever says, especially within physics, as truth. Don't, don't, don't accept anything that uh, someone gives you without like giving you some type of uh, logical reasoning. You know, honestly, the very first thing you should do is always reject it. Nah, maybe that's not true, but you know, the first thing that you should say, you should always be skeptical. That's what I'll say. That's probably a better description of how you should um, take the information that these people that these people that people give you. Be a little skeptical. It's okay to be skeptical and ask questions. It's always good to ask questions. And that's when you learn. You learn by asking questions. You learn by making mistakes. And you learn by putting in the hours and the effort. And that's the only way you're going to learn. There's no, there's no shortcuts here. All right, there ain't no shortcuts. That's why I like physics so much. But anyways, <clears throat> so prove Euler's identity. And the hint that I'll give you, the hint that I'll give you is a physicist, and I'm gonna capitalize that P, a physicist is very comfortable with making approximations. All right, and by approximations, I want to be a little more specific. Well, well hmm, maybe I won't be, actually. I, that's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. You take your time, and you think about it, and you come back to me, and eventually, you know, I'll certainly answer it on my Instagram, which you have to follow. Uh, you can follow that at on Instagram, at, un, at Lord, so L-O-R-D underscore uh, Claiborne underscore IG, all right? And honestly, it'll be in the description. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. You know, if I said anything wrong in this lecture, let me know, please. I, I really love your feedback. Uh, if you like the lecture, let me know. I really appreciate you. I love I love that feedback as well. It kind of reaffirms to me like, hey, hey I'm following along with what you're saying and I, and I like it. So, you know, just let me know. Uh, but once again, that's that's everything. I'm signing out and class is next, baby. Let's go. <laughs> oh, I guess I got to stop sharing before I could do that. So. <laughs>